Today we're gonna be mixing together Iro Iro in the colors Violet and Neon Pink. When I did the violet, it came out pretty blue-ish toned on my swatches and I've heard that it happens for a lot of people. So I wanted to do some mixes where we turned it a little bit more purpley for anyone who might want that or already own violet. So first thing you may notice is that my swatches are labeled one through 12. I just wanna say that is not synonymous with hair levels. I just do different video clips and pictures and such near the end of the video. So the numbers just help us keep track of each swatch. These are human hair swatches, but they are not virgin hair. So they've all been chemically colored, bleached, or treated at some point in their lifetimes. One is green. I often get requests when I do pinks and purples to use a green swatch. So we're gonna see how that turns out there. Two is a gray, three is a naturalish red. Four is a soft black. It's not gonna be like a very deep jet black. Um, and then four to 11 is a range that goes to like a platinum blonde. And then 12 is like a toned version of number 11. So with my mix videos, I always like to do two different ratios of mixing so we can kind of see the possibilities of what we could get. So I will do one mix on the top of each swatch and one mix on the bottom of each swatch. And today we're gonna start with a equal parts on the top and that will be the darker mix out of the two. So that is one part of the violet with one part of neon pink. Please keep in mind, everyone's hair is different, which means everyone's hair will take color differently. Plus different screens and monitors and such can make colors look different. So please just use my video as a reference for how this could possibly maybe turn out for you. For the second part, we're gonna do my favorite go-to ratio, which is a four to one ratio. So that's gonna be one part of the violet to four parts of neon pink. And I'm really excited to see if this glows at all. So I will check and get back to you on that once these are done. I'm gonna let them sit for about three hours just so they have some time to really absorb the color. I will then rinse them out and when they're dry, I will meet you back here and we can do some comparisons. Okay, so overall the Iro Iro Violet was already a pretty pigmented color. And since there's still so much of that pigment left, uh, pretty much all of these have been colored. So I said earlier in the video that the number four was more of a soft black versus a jet black. Now, because these are not virgin hair, they have a better likelihood of being able to absorb the color. Usually hair that is natural will kind of struggle to take semi-permanent colors. And then if they do take the semi-permanent colors, they may just wash out right away, especially cool tones. I would recommend if you have darker hair, especially virgin darker hair, 
doing a more warm toned purple will probably get you a more long lasting result. But obviously everyone's hair is different. So doing a strand test is the best advice that I have. So one was originally green. That actually has been fully covered by this mix, both the top and the bottom. If we compare it to the other swatches, it actually isn't too far off from maybe like the number seven. It's a little bit darker and maybe a little bit more muted compared to the more blonde swatches, which is very similar to how the lighter medium browns turned out. Because this is a pretty cool toned mix, there's actually not a huge difference on the number two. Usually number two does have a slightly more cool undertone look compared to the blonde swatches. It still turned out maybe a little bit darker and slightly dustier compared to the blondes, but undertone wise, it's fairly similar. Three was the natural red. On the top half, it does look pretty similar to like number six, where it definitely took the color and almost has like a blackish purple look. Whereas the bottom is a little bit more unique compared to these ones. I think the reddish undertone helped to bring out some of the warmth from the neon pink. So it's a very warm toned purple compared to the other ones on the bottom. Now, number four still looks like a black to me. I think in natural lighting, I could see a slight difference in undertone. But like I said, that's because this is not a virgin black swatch. So I caution anyone who has like a soft black naturally, um, but my advice would still stand that doing warmer undertones will get you a slightly more noticeable result if you do get a result. Um, number five was the darker brown. On the top, it looks even darker than it does on number three. It just has almost like, again, it looks almost black, like a super dark, cool toned, purpley vibe on there. And there's a slight purple hue on the bottom, but it's not quite as pigmented as it is on number three and then six and onward. And basically from six and onward on the top and the bottom, it just gets more and more saturated looking. Um, six and seven have a slightly more muted kind of look to it. So the lighter the hair, the brighter the color, which is true for most dyes in my experience. I do feel like eight through 12 is not a huge difference between them. I do see a brightness on number 11 that I don't quite see on the other swatches, but it's such a small difference on my swatches anyway that I'm not sure if it would matter as much. So you probably don't need to bleach your hair a ton if you are using this mix. So as for comparisons, I think I'm gonna do a comparison for the top and a comparison for the bottom, my most similar that I could find in my collection. So we'll start with the top comparison and that's gonna be Good Die Young in the color People Eater. This is comparable to number 12, 11, 10, and nine. So when I first did People Eater, to me, it looked straight up blue and I was really confused, but when I'd show it to my husband, he could see a little bit more purple coming through than I could. Once I swatched the Iro Iro Violet though is when I could finally see a lot more of those purple hues coming out from the People Eater. So if you don't know what Violet looks like, <laughs> this is actually more purple than what the Violet looks like, which is quite surprising considering. Um, the People Eater doesn't seem to be quite as pigmented though. Once we get to number nine, you can see it fading out a little bit, which kind of goes with my theory that cool tone colors sometimes struggle to take on darker hair swatches, even though number nine's not like a super dark swatch. On the number 11, I do see maybe a tiny bit more purple coming through on the People Eater, but because this is a mix between Aero Aero colors, you could probably add just a tiny bit more of the neon pink to make it a little bit more purple. I almost actually wonder if you add a little bit of diluter to this mix, if it would get something similar because the People Eater also doesn't seem to be just as dark. And so diluting the mix might get you something similar. So for the comparison on the bottom of each swatch, we're gonna look at directions in the color Plum. This is comparable to number 12, 11, 10, and nine. So I think in comparison to the top, the bottom half looks quite warm, but when I was looking at my other purples, the bottom half actually still leans quite cool toned. I think that's my favorite part about doing mixes is being able to control 
somewhat of the outcome depending on what you're looking for. So if you were hoping for a very cool toned purple with violet and it turned a little bit too blue for you, you could definitely still achieve a very cool toned pigmented purple using this mix. Now the plum on its own is definitely way too dark in comparison to the bottom half. I was actually looking at the diluted section and I felt like it wasn't too far off. My other cool tone purples tend to either be a little bit too cool toned or a little bit too light in comparison to the bottom. So I don't have anything that's perfectly similar. The next in line to similarity was actually also directions and that was in the color violet. That one was just a touch more blue, but that one was also similar with the direct dye and not with diluting it. Whereas with this one, you know, you'd have to dilute it to get a similar color. And then if you're looking for something that's a touch more warm, the Arctic Fox Purple AF would be the next in line for warmth from what I found. All right, so now that we're done with our comparisons, I would like to look at our before and after clips, which those will all be done in natural lighting. I hope this video helped. If you have a request, I do have a link below to a Google form you can fill out. Just remember, I only do brands that do not test on animals. Thank you so very, very much to my patrons and thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.